now being recorded. Welcome everyone to a meeting of the Amherst Cultural Council. My name is Angela Mills and I work for the town manager. This meeting is being recorded and will be uploaded shortly to the town of Amherst YouTube channel and all recordings can be found via the webpage for the Cultural Council. Thank you everyone for your hard work. And at this time, I'd like to acknowledge the co-chairs, Julianne and Matt. Thanks, right. Angela. Um, do you have the script pulled up? I Matt? will go ahead and I do. And Angela, are you recording it? Okay. Julianne is the is the host. So Julianne, you'll right. save it to the cloud. Uh, yeah, let me go ahead and press record. I, I will make you co- Well, it is recording. Yep, it's recording. You're good. You're good to roll. Okay. And Julianne, you can make Matt co-host in case he needs to share documents and stuff. All right, doing that now. Uh, we do have one attendee tonight. Hello, Pat. Um... Okay, um, so briefly, the pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, uh, we are allowed to meet over Zoom. Um, members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so on Zoom or um, can watch the YouTube recording afterwards. There's no in-person attendance um, of the public and the chat function will be turned off. And Julianne and I will do our best to keep an eye on the participants list. And if we see anybody in the audience, we will put a call out. Oh, we do have an attendee actually, and it's uh, Pat Onabaku. So we'll put out a call for public comment um, as appropriate. So before we do that, I'm just wanna go around and do a roll call, um, make sure everybody can hear me and be heard. So we'll start with you, Julianne. Hello, yes. Hi. <laughs> Eleanor. Hi. Cody. Hi. Hey, Cody. Uh, Sylvie. I didn't actually hear you. I know. There you are. <laughs> and Rachel. Hi, I'm here. Hi, Rachel. Um, okay, so um, we do have one member of the public in attendance. And if you'd like to make a public comment, please just go ahead and use the, the hand raise function and we will bring you in. Um, before we move into the grant deliberation process, I think we should talk about December 14th. So that's that's the tentative date that we had set um, for a voting meeting. The voting meetings is the most important meeting of the year for us because it's when we make our final approval of a slate of grants and, and a grant amount. Um, however, Julian, you were saying I, that we didn't have. Yeah, I dropped the ball on trying to find another date. I, it's going to be hard to do so. So at this point, I'm not even sure um who who we had that could or couldn't attend let me see if i can pull that up um and i was still waiting to hear from several of uh those who have exams as far as um what was or um, i can't attend oh, it, it looks like eleanor and cody and sylvie are all out for that meeting i no I'm in. Sorry, I'm again. good. I'm good. Or I will be doing that day. It's going to the home open. But yeah. You're traveling? Yeah. No. I said, oh, I have that day is I plan to go to the hockey game. So <laughs> I, I have been planning. No, I'm in because it's way before that. Yeah, cool. So, Excellent. Yeah. Well, um, yes, I actually think I'm all through it. I, I'd marked it down, I think, is like a not sure or if I'm able to. Mm, true, yeah, uh, yeah. 
think that I'm good to go for it. And sorry, I totally dropped the ball and sending you other dates. So I'm glad that you're in good works. company, but you know, it's okay. <laughs> it's all right. Yeah. Right. I can um, also make I, the 14th. You can? If it's the same time. Yeah. Yeah. I need to mute myself to take a call, make sure it's not an emergency. I'm hearing um, generally that maybe we should just go ahead and stick with the 14th. Um, I think that's probably our safest bet. And then if we decide we need to do a, a later or another um, voting meeting, we can. But I think we should tentatively stick with that um, and, you know, sort of roll roll with the punches as they come. Does that sound okay? Yeah, I'm, I'm actually glad at this point that I dropped the ball because uh, it all worked out and we can keep it as as planned originally. Thank you all. Awesome. Great. So um, i not seeing any hands raised. Uh, I also see Emma Carr Shabazz in the, um, uh, as an attendant, or I'm sorry, a uh, attendee. So if you anybody wants to make a public comment, just raise your hand and we would um, recognize you. But not seeing any hands raised, I think we need to move into our deliberation process. As, as we said over the email, we are a little tight for time. Um, and so what we're actually proposing is that we take a look at a subset of the grants um, that may not have met our, our guidelines. And, you know, particularly for you, Sylvie, says this is your first time coming through. You know, what we wind up doing typically, we have about 100 applications this year, give or take. We wind up giving um, partial funds to the vast majority of majority of those. They're all, you know, they all have merit, and so they're all worth funding in the to the for the most part. Um, but there there are quite a few that came in that didn't that either didn't have date or venue or other pieces that just didn't seem to fully meet our criteria. Um, and so Julianne and I thought maybe we should spend today's meeting going through those and making sure that we collectively. Um, agree that those grants don't meet our local guidelines. And then once we do that, the rest of it is kind of, you know, figuring out who to fully fund and then which ones to give partial funding amounts to. Um, so if that makes sense, should I, Julian, should I share my screen to do this? Is that the most effective way? I think we should um, possibly just, just go um, grant by grant. And I, I think we should start with um, those that we've not discussed previously. Um, so I think that would okay. have us at sequence number um, 41, I believe. Yeah, that's what I have too. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, and I'll just make a comment for, for uh, Pat and Emilcar, just because I know that they're both attached to uh, the same grant. That grant we was high is in the 20s i think and and our full panel book is is published on our website now so we um discussed that grant a few weeks ago and gave it generally favorable support um we haven't determined final amounts yet but it's it is not on the list of grants that didn't meet our criteria so i just thought that might be helpful information for you if you're watching at home and looking for your um grant Sorry, Julian. So you said 41? Yes. Yes. So in in some cases, you know, as as you know, we did put a call out for additional information from all grantees across the board, whether they provided it or not, just to be fully transparent and, and fair in the process. So um in in some cases, as we go down, um, just no information was sent. And you know we're still in a situation potentially with with no date and no no location noted. How would you like to start, Matt? Yeah. So this one, um, this is the crowns for King. I think we actually started to speak about this one, and folks really liked it. Um, oh. It was one of the ones about portrait photography, online lookbook. However, it didn't have. It was missing a lot of details in terms of. The where, yeah. the when, um, and the how. Yeah, it's still listed so, as all 2024 and just all over Western Massachusetts. So really no particular date or location or for it. So I, I'll actually 
go first here. I'm, um, I think that's, that's something that's got an on, it's basically a website. This lookbook is a website. So I'm not sure that creating a website is quite as time bound as most of our grant applications. So I'm not sure that I would say it, it, you know, it fails to meet that local criteria. I don't know. What do others, what do other folks think? I'm sorry. For me, I did comment about the location. It's just how do you know that we'll pick him? You know, my fear is we reward, we award this grant. And so I mean, I gave it a one and something I don't feel comfortable funding. I I did not score it very high either, Cody, on the on the merits, I think, just you know, because it is it does look a little bit like a personal project. And also um yeah, I mean I but but I didn't have it as not qualifying. So Juliet, I don't know if you want to speak to that a little bit. I know it's one of the ones you were thinking might not. I I don't think that all of Western Massachusetts and all of 2024 qualifies as providing a date and a location and there's no letter of support from anyone in the community i i just feel at that point um you know there's just not enough substance to the application for me to feel it'd be responsible to fund it and since they're requesting their full budget from us of over five thousand dollars you know i it just i don't i don't think it's even meaningful to do a small partial it just seems like the money needs to go to actual events that we know that the the community will have the ability to learn about and access and be part of did they not have a strong um sorry i'm not i can't I'm having trouble opening my panel book right now did they not have a strong public um publicity plan um promotion would be on Instagram and that they were going to make a website and talk to local LGBTQ groups and businesses to ask them to promote the project. So, um, and just so no support from, mm -hmm. from any organizations, no other named participants um just it, it it's you know i i think it's a wonderful idea i just don't don't think that without a, a date and location or any supporting groups or or other people that we can fund it well the reason i ask i mean folks folks will remember we have to be specific about the de denial reasons um and so the three that the two that um mass cultural council give us are not clearly related to arts humanity or science or did not provide enough public benefit for our community compared to other proposals um, the third one is you know basically any local priorities that that it didn't meet and so i i i would agree that this is this one probably does not provide as much public benefit as as many of these other very worthy ones so i think if we do go with denying this this grant, and I agree for the same reasons, I think mm -hmm. we would just probably go with that that third reason. That I think rather rather get into a debate about, you know, whether something um, online has a sure. date and and venue. I, I agree. We we can simply say not enough public be uh, benefit. There was nothing specific to Amherst. Right. Yep, yeah, that's right. It's interesting that there's they're not applying to other cultural councils. If it's like all of Western Massachusetts, at least that I saw. Let me make sure of that. That's a good point also. Yeah, no, none. Okay. Um, 
You want to move on to 43? Yep. Do you this want was me? Happier Valley Comedy. Um, in this interactive based uh, presentation based on her TED Talk, TEDx Talk, professional improviser Pam Victor shares immediately applicable techniques to help quiet the inner critic. Um, is this one of the um, Chamber of Commerce items? Yes, it is. Yes. Okay. So for Sylvie and for others who don't remember, last year we had a similar circumstance where somebody was doing a presentation for the chamber. They're being paid by the chamber, and we were asked to essentially um, defray the cost of the presentation, and we denied it at that time, I believe. Mm -hmm. So again, it's about public benefit, right? Like how how many people actually have access to this and what is the nature of the activity so the the i think that's right yeah it it's the target audience is the chamber of commerce we we're not 100% clear whether it's open to the public or or not it is free to those who sh show up they list the audience as being um 40 folks you know probably members of the Chamber of Commerce. So um it it just seems a little little um out outside of what we do to provide, you know, content for Chamber of Commerce meetings. Is there anyone who would like to to Yeah, I, I think consider it does have a date and location. But what is the cultural and arts benefit to the community? Um, right. it, yeah, I think it comes down to not not enough public I, benefit. Yeah. This is it is tough for me because you know I think you have a lot of business owners in the chamber who who benefit from from this. Um, it just it feels like a professional development program that has a slight cultural aspect to it. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I, I agree with you, Rachel. I'm not sure that it's that it's truly on the nose in terms of arts and culture activities. But um, it definitely does seem like a professional development opportunity. Yeah, that that part is clear. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. OK, is there anyone who would like to contest leaving this as not funded for not enough public benefit? OK, all right, let's we've got to keep moving. So next. Oh one yeah, is... are we doing time stamping? Not really. I think we'll just. Yeah, I, I, hopefully we can move faster than time stamping would be the goal. If you want me to time, just let me know. We can we can we can shrink okay. it down. Do you... <laughs> so do you we're on B one. Next... Yeah. Do you want to take the next one, Matt? Yeah, this is oh. the Haitian cuisine tour, which sounds delicious. Um, and essentially, and this one, we I, we may have discussed this one already, but but on behalf of um, La Pearl Caribbean Restaurant in Everett, Mass., we present the Haitian Cuisine Takeover. This initiative aims to introduce the rich flavors of Haitian cuisine. Um, and so essentially, let me see, I, I'm going to open their panel book because I, I don't want to get this wrong, but I believe this is something that kind of got sent out to many cultural councils. Yeah, it universities did, yeah. across the state of Massachusetts. And, you know, I, I think it's a neat idea. Um, it didn't come with any letter of support. And it, it seemed like the kind of thing that, you know, if we fund it, they'll do it. Um, and so the question yeah. becomes, you, you know, is this something that we want that we need to prioritize for our council? Because, you know, again, they it does look like they apply to, they listed one, two, three, four, five, Wells everywhere from Wellesley and to Worthington, so that's pretty much spanning. But there's no there's no date or location. They there could be a date or location, but there there isn't one. Right. And you know we've we've proactively communicated to everyone, and they they didn't even respond. So, yep. Is there? I mean, it does sound delicious, but unfortunately, I'd say this one does not meet our our criteria without a date or a location. I I was to see 
as a great you know person if you go and have it in colleges and universities it should fall on to dining services in the perspective college not cultural councils. Good point. And yeah, even just having a letter from the university that they'd like to have it would have, you know, been been something we could then consider, but we got nothing. So okay. All right, shall we move on? Um so the next one's number 54. Is that Ken? No. No, it's um oh I wanted to tell you, Julie, she came in at the last minute with a letter of support. Okay, and so I they didn't... have a date. And and what is the location? Yeah, it came in late last night. Uh, Connections concert series. Yeah, off the top of my head, I don't remember, but but she had a letter of support from the venue. Okay. All right. Well, um, I guess there there were some other. So there is a date. There is a location. Um, this one comes down to a question, though. I'd still say as to whether or not there is enough public benefit. Um, to grant twelve thousand four hundred and forty dollars to to you know this is twenty percent of our entire um, allocation, right? Or well, I I don't think our decision right now is is twelve thousand dollars. I mean, our, what we're kind of focusing on is is who who are we going to deny? Got it. So. Um, all right, so I guess we'll need to come back to this one then. Yeah, to me, I mean, to me, this seems like a, a worthy um, project, you know, and worthy of partial funding. I mean, I agree it it might be on the lower side for partial funding. You know, it's classical music in Northampton, um, but but it looks like a nice project. I don't think we can deny it outright. So this is the one that or we could obviously we can we can do you know we can do anything we need to, but but. I... So this is the one that yeah, it... came in with the venue, Matt, at the last minute yeah it is yeah okay. um it's it's northampton center for the arts you know what number is it so so one of the things just for folks to think about before we mull this one back over is worth going to read this one because they state that they applied for um lcc funding in the locations where this show would take place, and those locations are Northampton, Holyoke, East Hampton, and Amherst, except there is no Amherst performance. Um, so maybe something changed in their plans. But again, I think it comes down to, you know, uh, it, it certainly is a wonderful event. Um, we'll just have to decide, you know, how much benefit there there is. Um, I read the wording of that a little differently because they say, it's confusing to me at least, but um, they said who's in places in four cities whose residents will be significantly and positively impacted by our offerings, comma, and where shows will take place, Northampton, Holyoke, East Hampton, and Amherst. And like, I just, I mean, it's very possible that maybe they intended to have a show, but I thought maybe it was like, we're not going to have a show in Amherst, but it's somewhere where residents will receive benefits. You know what, if they had written it as and or. Yeah, exactly. And or. It's like. Yeah. It's, it isn't the English language fun. All right, well, we'll have to, to come back to that one. So then um, I guess the next one is number numbers 58 and 59, uh, which you know we cannot do two grants for any one person to begin with. So the, were they at all different, Matt? Really, I just want to make sure. My, yeah, well, my numbering looks a little different than yours. Oh. I have Ken Long Street at 56. Um, that one I, I have thought Maloney. I thought I struck Ken Long Street because uh Ken asked to um 
pass on the entire grant. He he has to withdraw his. Would you would yeah, you like? So we should pause just for a second and tell everybody that that Ken Long Street withdrew. So um, when we were under reimbursement granting before moving to direct granting, every um, grant project had to be completed and we re received a final grant report with all of the financial reporting documents, um, which could be receipts, uh, invoices from people uh, who were outside of the organization and who got paid, canceled checks, redacted bank statements, any number of, of different documents. And the treasurer at that point would not issue a payment until um, we were able to satisfy that the documentation was sufficient before the, the town would actually cut those a check for those funds. So moving to direct granting, to be frank, there's been a lot of confusion from grantees where um, they've taken the direct granting in some cases as just being a, a totally on your honor. However, the materials that we send out and the the um, grant agreement that they sign um, does state that they will send us a final grant report with marketing materials, with documentation, such as receipts of their expenses within two weeks of uh, the close of their event. And uh, we've done considerable legwork to track down these funds. And um, so Ken Longstreet's uh, grant with the, I think the Bad News Jazz Orchestra, it's an orchestra or big band. Um, you know, they wrote a fantastic uh, final grant report minus the documentation for all of the stipends that were paid out. And they've come back to us and they don't seem to have a way of you know, providing that. And sent, so they've uh, said that going forward, uh, they don't believe, I guess, that they'll be able to do that for future grants. So they just were going to pass on funds from us, which is a very frustrating situation to uh, to be in. Um, does anyone have any, any questions about that? I, sorry, I didn't mean to. Uh, all, all I meant was we should just let the group know that that Ken Ken wrote to us and said I'm withdrawing from FY24, so we don't have to consider that that grant. And ah. certainly, I you know we should all be thanking Julianne for her incredibly diligent efforts in, in the correspondence stuff. But but for what for for our purposes today, we just need to know that we don't have to factor in that that application. Apologies for oversharing, folks, but that's that's how the sausage <laughs> gets made and. And you know we have had um, mm -hmm. guidance from the town that they they you know want additional um, kind of scrutiny on on the the reporting since folks are getting the money. I mean, you know, at least the event happened, you know, um, but uh, that's where we are. So, so the numbering that I have that still has the Ken the Ken Long Street in there has um, Scott Maloney the I am grants at fifty applications as fifty seven and fifty eight both. Yep. Um, and so, I believe that neither one of these gave us a specific date, nor a booked venue, and then we did not get any response to the outreach. Is that accurate? I think you, we might have gotten an actual date in the end because there's there's a date quote april 24th no letter um but i still don't believe that it it, it meets our criteria without a location or or even really meets kind of our um you know arts culture science and open for discussion though I don't I don't think even from the description on this I was very clear on what it totally was and yeah I think I think without a location and with that I I would be okay with not funding it anyone any other uh thoughts here I would support what you all just said 
Okay, Should move to the next then. I I think this is we, this is what we have to do in terms in terms of efficiency. But I will say this is a little bit of a bummer meeting. <laughs> it's kind of a bummer meeting to to focus in on the ones that don't meet criteria. Um, but I you know, I think just in the in the name of of using our time well, I think we have to do it. So I appreciate everybody hanging in there. Um, yeah, really, what we like agree. to give money to to arts and our our organizations. Um, okay, so on that tip, though, jumping down to number sixty five, we have Jason Montgomery, um, and this was uh, yeah. So this was the Attack Bear Press. Um, this is texting poems. So you text a request to them; they text a poem back to you. Um, they did not respond to our inquiry. Um, and then we actually have not had any communication with them since a oh, year and a half now. And, and that relates to Julianne's efforts in terms of, of getting documentation for their previous grant. So although they technically have another three and a half weeks to provide a final grant report for this year's activity, the lack of communication and specifics on this current grant, I think, makes them you know, unlikely for us to fund. And I, I did happen to pass by Emmer's books and checked out their poetry vending machine. Unfortunately, I didn't have any quarters, but um, one thing that we haven't been too much, you know, enforcing, but was a disappointment when I got there was that only the MCC was credited. There we have uh, on, on the actual vending machine. It said nothing about Amherst Cultural Council uh, supporting it, which, all right, I'm being a stickler and um, I think that's something we need to communicate out more clearly in, in our um, materials. And one of the reasons for that, um, sorry to digress, but was when we had the fall block party, I literally had people who were fully engaged in arts and culture who said, I didn't even know we had an Amherst Cultural Council. You guys don't do anything. You don't fund anything. <laughs> so um, actually uh, having that um, that accreditation or, or, or credit, sorry, academic um really really does you know serve the community so that they know that we're here and serving them any any we also any... have a better logo than mcc and awesome t-shirts so you know i just feel like and and stickers so um for those reasons as well i mean I, you know if i was an art austin based <laughs> I mean, amherst based artist that that's it looks better than the mcc logo um, but I'm, but I'm biased. You're a little partial. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So unless anybody wants to make a plea, I think we're going to, to not fund, um, attack bear press text poems. Uh, that brings us down to 60, sorry, 60, uh, 71. This is Camilla Prius. Um, La Borachita, that's terrible pronunciation. I'm sorry, De Amor. Um, uh, and this one we really liked, or I, I personally really liked the application, but did not have, I think, I guess they just said spring. They didn't say a specific date. Is that the issue, Julianne? Yeah, it's really just disappointing as far as we, we did not hear back and it, it looks like a, a quality event but again with with uh without the the date and i believe there was maybe no letter of support either um um yeah let me see if i can pull the exact one again yeah that's too bad and i just i just double checked that we don't have any emails from them nothing and i i just feel like you know we we stated it very clearly in our local guidelines and then we sent out that courtesy email and I just, it's, you know, um, it's too bad. It's something to think about for next year. You know, the, the, the venue and date confirmation is not required by MCC, um, but we are requiring it this year. And so we have to stick true to that. Looking into kind of the fine detail here, I am seeing that the other cultural council they applied to was, um, were, were Boston and Springfield. So, Perhaps it's just that they were applying and that like others, they would get a date, you know, but they didn't even contact us. So we really have, have no, it just doesn't meet criteria without that. Yeah, there's, I think there's kind of a spray, a spray technique that some applicants use where they 
just spray out applications to a lot of cultural councils and and that means that you sometimes lose track of your application status and and don't review the local guidelines carefully well yeah but I, there's really no um kind of excuse for for not communicating if you do intend to go forward then yeah they got a very clear email so um okay so then moving on to 72 this is morgan james peters um thunderchild it's really too bad also there's another great one um touring storytelling music and music performance um but we never got any response from them correct Just double checking the forms, but I'm sure we would we would have caught it if they had. All right, I'm curious. Can everyone hear my teenager talking in the background? Because if so, I'll mute. No one can hear him. Okay. No. Nope. Thanks. So, unfortunately. Um, Morgan James Peters, we have to, I think, you know, deny because we don't have any um, confirmation. Yep. So moving along to 73, Pioneer Valley Symphony. This is Oliver Town, the education concert. They have a date. This is in the Greenfield High School Auditorium. Um, this is a $350 grant request. I assume this one is included on our list because the public benefit is just it's it's Greenfield students only, right? Yeah, this is during the school day in at Greenfield schools. So, you know, it, it's along the lines of not enough public benefit. There could be the odd uh, Amherst resident who has reason to be in Greenfield public schools during a school day, but it won't be Amherst school children. Um, so I think it's it's just something that, you know, I. I can't support taking funds that we could be using, you know, for our own students, for instance, and saying, you know, that we need to support programming in Greenfield that they can't access, so. Yeah, I agree. And I think we may have actually touched on this one at our last meeting, now that I... It, I will say just for everyone's kind of benefit, I did hear from a, a, a board member over at um, the... Uh, Pioneer Valley Symphony Orchestra, that it pretty much is, I think at this point, an all volunteer organization. So, um, but but from a, a public benefit to Amherst as a whole, unfortunately, um, yeah, we, we have to pass on this one. All right, so jumping down to number 77, this is Recovery and Poetry. Um, and multidisciplinary date was going to be in January of well, this next month. Uh, it just says virtual and physical location. We did not get any follow up that I can see. Um, it's a, a neat concept. Uh, it also it also seemed like a pretty un, under underdeveloped um, application generally, but I think a, a neat concept and. Um, so, I, but I think, unfortunately, I don't think there's any way we can we can fund this one. No. So, okay. keep moving down. Um, Eighty seven hours. <laughs> this is tough. Oh, it's they're out. They this is the one. To everyone, they, you yeah. know. Yes, they do. They do. And they have Worthington locate listed as the location. Mm -hmm. That's odd. Why is that odd? Well, don't like you said. Don't they usually apply to everyone? Um, they they do. They're a group, as I recall. If I if I look in the book, I think out of the New York City area, perhaps, and they they come up this way, and you know they at some point. Um, Past councils had had given them um, some funds, maybe a partial grant, but we haven't uh, funded them anytime recently. And it's, um, 
yeah, the mailing address yeah. is, is East End Avenue, New York, which is fine, but uh, and with a physical address in Worthington, Mass. And um, yeah, and they kind of acknowledge Amherst virtually, and I think they kind of cut and paste, you know, your community yeah. here virtually into their applications. So, no, I agree. I think, you know, that's that's really too far. And we have, you know, we have plenty of classical music that's being offered, you know, right here in town. Um, so I think we're on the same page there, unless anybody feels differently. Uh, this one, you know, as as you all know, 81 is the Silverthorne Theater. Um, and the issue there was... We so they not have date range and they have Hampshire College Theater. What was the issue there? No final grant report, no communication. Uh, I've been reaching out and reaching out and reaching out. Um, and, you know, it, it's it's frustrating that um, <clears throat> the, the emails for documentation coming from the same email address get no reply while the emails um, to get the check cut, you know, um, do get a response. So very very disappointing um and i mean folks things things happen sometimes you know with these volunteer organizations we've heard back from groups especially over covid where somebody was ill somebody dies somebody's house has a tree fall on it like you know life goes on and we really do truly you know work with those folks you know to the best extent that we can as far as how the fiscal cycles roll and and whether you know their money can still be available, but uh, at this point, yeah, with with having requested um, information, we we can't fund it, which is just unthinkable because I believe there's so much community benefit here. So we're gonna have to, I think, write our letters this year to capture this issue. So I I, I agree with you. If they don't obviously, if they don't if they don't provide their grant report, they need to be they can't be funded technically. Everybody knows technically they have until the end of the month to, you know, to complete their project. So I think we need to capture that window in our grant letters now and just be really clear that we need we need a completed grant report before we're going to approve a grant from you. You know, and that way we won't have this issue next year as long as we <laughs> write that down. Um, but I, but I'll say that, you know, um yeah, if they do manage to materialize with a grant report or correspondence, I would like to put them back into the mix. In other I words, agree. yeah, you know, I think right now, and I think I had committed to calling them at some point, and I and I will, I've, I have totally forgot what the issue was. I thought it was all captured with my yeah. with the email blast. I will, I will call them since that that issue. Yeah. They're just yeah. they're just so good, and to have them performing here in Amherst would be yeah. fabulous. And I, you know. Yeah. You know, for instance, I did finally track down receipts from a 2022 grant from Springfield Symphony Orchestra. And it was just a formatting thing. Somebody emailed them, but they couldn't be open. They weren't really attached. And I've been, I mean, asking repeatedly and finally got it just the other day in the nick of time to keep them off this list. So, you know, again, volunteer organizations and you know who's responsible who who has these documents you know year to year so um it's uh it is a challenge i appreciate that okay so jumping down to number 70 or sorry 84 this is song keepers um <laughs> uh golf park uh thump and soul in the park sounds amazing uh, outdoor pop up outdoor dance club and musical session of hand drums um, house music, Afrobeat, soul funk. I mean, my personal notes, I just have, you know, this is a high, a high partial pending logistics, but we never heard any response, right? Yeah, this one, unfortunately, with no date uh, or locate. Well, it has a location, not a secured location, but no date, no communication. It does not meet our criteria. Just yeah. sad. Uh, we skipped the one above. Um, at least I think we should have had the... the uh, for the brass event that's in Boston. What's the number? Mm, number 83. Oh, yeah. So I'm missing that one. Yep, you're right. Uh, 
Not, nothing wrong with the event. I think it just falls under not enough public benefit since it is in Boston. Yep. I agree with that. In Worcester, actually, but yeah, I agree. Oh, no, I'm sorry. It's both Boston and Worcester. Okay. I have, I have that as well. And I just have a quick question for the following one that we're going to get to next. The um is I have in my notes whether the contact person is the same as the um, grant in number 72, which we talked about a few minutes ago. For Thunderchild? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because the name I saw, I, th I think I saw the same name on the application um, in the panel book. I mean, I don't know if that makes a difference or not, but um, that, I just had that as a question. And if we're, it's on the list for not being funded at all, then the point is moot. So there is um, just one email address, I believe. Um, Yeah, there's there's just a single single physical address in Greenfield and a single email address. It's two different people, um, at least in terms of lead applicants. But I think, you know, that being said, neither one of them is providing us with with the the details. So I think unfortunately we have to deny them. All right, so moving down to 85, um, this is Janice Sorensen, um, and this is Magpie Farm and Art Depot, and this was, oh, this is a person who essentially wants to be reimbursed for house parties that she held um, at, at her home, and I think that just doesn't really fit our um, public benefit concept. I, I have to agree. As far as, you know, I don't know what the the, the marketing kind of <laughs> approach was, but I don't think people got the, world, the word. Well, some people did, but they're all our friends, I guess. <laughs> Not the inclusivity that we're, we're striving for, I would say. Well, and this was at in, in Buckland also, I believe. Where will the project take place? Buckland. Yeah. At Magpie Farm. It was basically promoted by word of mouth. But... I feel like she, she had a flyer, but, you know. Yeah, it was mm. at, at their house. So, exactly. So, okay. Unless anybody wants to advocate for this one, let's move on. So where we 90, that was uh, 93, uh, Nolan Becca. Is that not enough public benefit or doesn't meet our criteria? Uh, I think I think we can use doesn't meet criteria there. Um, okay. I don't know. Yeah, that's you're right. It's probably it's probably safer to say public benefit compared to other proposals. Um, Got it. Okay. Does sound like it was fun for those who attended up there. Yeah, exactly. That's right. And uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure it doesn't meet our. Yeah. Right on the edge. All right. So I'm Nolan Becca, what ahead. happened with them? Well, they have two. Oh, right. And technically, we can only um, consider one of the two. They they uh, came back with um, dates and a letter of support for the the grant with the uh, lower amount. Oh, wait, no, the the one, let me start over. They have two. They have dates and locations for both, as it turns out. But we can't fund two of them. They should have put it through as one grant um, with both locations, all of the dates, and and asked for the full amount. But um, with that, I would, I would say, if we're all in agreement that we would strike and Cody's got a question. Strike the the lower um, amount that they're asking for to be able to deliberate uh, about the the higher amount. Yes, Cody. I mean, in terms of public yeah. benefit, I would 
they're so great and say that animals coming to does go to I think this is for the home lands festival, yeah. So I do sing this public benefit, but you know, be a event planner, I don't and they just clearly state that. But from personal knowledge, yeah, folks from Amos do travel up. Absolutely. No one's questioning the public benefit. I, I think we'd like to be having a different conversation, which is would be along the lines of, you know, wanting to fully fund the, all of the events from the two different grants. And yet we are limited by our guidelines where we can only accept one grant application from each individual or organization. So we need to do a better job with educating folks that they have to put everything into one grant and where it gets a little, you know, messy is, um, you know, the, the funds that are spent and the documentation for the funds that are spent also tie back to that particular grant in, in the end and need to reflect the date, whoever the stipends would go to all of those kinds of things all need to al align. Um, so, it's it's just one of those things that happens every year that some folks apply for more than one grant. And I I think the judicious thing is to keep the grant for the higher amount and to have to, you know, put the lower amount aside as the one that we can't fund and, and then to, to really explain this to folks there, you know, directly that what one thing so I, she's i mean you're right julian we that, that's kind of been our practice and and there have been occasions when grantees have written back to us when they realize this and they've combined their you know we've we have been we've worked with folks who have realized the error of their ways i i made a note to myself i'm going to reach out to mass cultural because folks have given us the feedback that there are councils out there who want a separate application for each project that your group is is putting forward and this is a local guideline that um, was in place before I got here. I don't really know the history of it, how it came about. Um, certainly, I, I prefer it this way because it's more efficient than chasing the same person for multiple grants. But I want to ask our MCC rep if if are we are we the outlier or are we the norm? You know, do most cultural councils do what we do? Because it does it does kind of stink if if there's you know if if an organization has got to follow. If the rules are that different from one town, one council to another, so I, I'm going to check on it. But, but um, you know, I think unfortunately, I think Julian's right, and certainly I will advocate to fully fund the other Nolan Becca project. And um, you know, and I think we'll just kind of and, and we'll communicate this to them so they know for next year also because they're a great partner. Thanks for seeing what they say, and I would really, you know, prefer to to not have to even bring this up or talk about it so yeah. Um, yeah let's let's see what they say and maybe there's another option um okay so moving down to let's see 98 valley arts mentors um so what happened here Julia, we can't hear you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, with with this one, um, there was uh, some question as far as you know, really kind of the the scheduled dates of it, right? So it's listed um, 
January through November taking place virtually. Um, and it, it really wasn't clear to me at least as to how that worked. If everyone else has read it, I'd be happy to hear, you know, if somebody else has a better understanding of how this virtual event works. Aside from that, they're, they're bringing it to, um, Amherst, but we had, um, no, no letter of support from any Amherst organization. Um, and I, I think it was supposed to be benefiting the, the, the schools directly. No. Help me out here. I'm no, this is, I mean, so I think I, I would start by saying that this one, I don't think we can say it, it doesn't meet our criteria for logistics type stuff. Um, it's, but it's, I mean, it's a fairly established program um, that, so, I mean, I'll, I'll read the little, the little blurb. Um, essentially it says, uh, where'd it go? Um, the, okay, they shared promotional materials for last year's program. Um, where did it go? I, if anybody, oh, here it is. Okay, summarize the proposed project. Collaborative project with PT Theater Company, Holyoke Media, and Big Brothers Big Sisters. Uh, a six month early career artist mentoring program. We match emerging artists with an experienced mentor in their discipline who guides their journey. The pair meets every two weeks with support along the way through meetings with VAM staff and a curriculum. Um, second program is a webinar series designed to support arts and arts organizations. Topics include business planning for artists, Latinx arts membership, indigenous arts membership. Um, so, you know, it's not a, it's not an event. It's not a concert that you go to, but I think it's, it's certainly a, an arts aligned program. Um, so. No, it, it seems great in many ways. Um, Cody. Does it mention Amherst at, at all? But Cody has his hand up. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah. I wasn't. Um, we're selling stuff over long durations. I almost wonder if they plan to pay participants throughout the project or just a overall stipend you know especially this throughout the year projects I think that'd be more helpful to know because without that, it looks like, well, they are not sure of a date. So what I don't see are, are applications that might help us down the road. Is this a long-term project? And that would indicate maybe there's regular stipends given out. I think that's the that's the that's the main question: is how are they going to use the money? And it looks to me like you know, we would be contributing to the stipend program for their mentors. Um, and it's, you know, so to me, that's, that's, and I don't see it. Actually, there's no cost to, to be mentored. Is there, let me see. Projected income. Yeah. There's no reference to. There's no cost to participate. Yeah. So, I mean, we can the certainly discuss, is for the mentors, we can discuss this one further on its merits, but um, I don't, I, I'm not, I'm not open to disqualifying it based on not meeting our criteria. I think this is for me anyway, this is, this is kind of, it's a really innovative thing. It's, it's definitely outside of our normal sort of, you know, 
concert play repertoire, but I think it's an incredibly valuable, you know, program. Rachel, please. Yeah, I love the concept. I gave it um, a, quite a high score in my own ratings, but I think um, I just want to raise for our consideration out of, in principle, um, does this fall under the professional development category of of grants? You know, and and then the the um, other part of the 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 webinar series or the resources that sounds great because that sounds like a lot more people have access to that. Um, whereas the one on one mentoring. I, you know, like I said, I love, I love the concept, but should we be using our grant money for, to, to underwrite those expenses and costs? I guess that's the question I have. That's a good question. I mean, again, it, it's right on the edge of our, of our normal sort of scope. Um, I think the things that, that make me sort of want to advocate for funding it, um, number one, you know, they are explicitly seeking out artists and helping those artists. So just looking at the flyers from previous programs, um, you know, they, they help their, they help artists seek out funding through cultural councils. So, you know, it's, it's promotional for us and for the MCC. Um, the ins and outs of running an art gallery. I mean, the fact, you know, Amherst has lost some great art galleries in the past. Uh, you know, I think, you know, so, so, to me, you know, it sort of supports that creative ecosystem, like you can economic ecosystem that that is so vital to, you know, the economy and the cultural life of the valley. Um, and and you're right, Rachel. I mean, it's it's in a professional develop. It's a it's a learning experience for the artists who are getting mentored. Um, and the difference to me is that between this and the the um, chamber proposal is that this is a targeted group of of early career and young artists being mentored who will you know explicitly turn around and contribute to the cultural fabric um and not to say that you know many of our chamber of commerce members are also artists and, and such but i think that's not their pri primary that that wouldn't be what i would like primarily call their demographic okay it sounds like as far as it not meeting criteria strictly based on it you know uh, hard and fast date and schedule is off the table. So we will move on with this one. Yeah, it, come back to it. Yeah, it's it's certainly interesting. And so then I'm I'm on number ninety nine. Whoa, that means we're almost to the end of our list. And this is um, live music making history live. <laughs> date was TBD in twenty four. Location is TBD in Amherst. And then um, it's a an incredibly beautiful proposal, a journey through the roots of American popular music. So one of these heartbreaking ones that you know, unfortunately, we are we are uh, you know um, bound by certain rules and and we have to stick to them. And and we gave everybody a second chance with that email. So uh, I, just, I don't see any note from them. I, no, we don't have anything. I just want to add that, you know, especially with the direct granting, it's really important that we fund events that actually bring public benefit. And for that to happen, they have to happen. And if they can't communicate, you know, any additional details when we're asking for, you were quite clear that you were likely to not be funded at all if you don't communicate this to us. So um, I think a lot of people apply and it's like yeah it'll be great if, if, if it all comes through yeah i'm gonna do that um but that uh that doesn't se secure cultural events necessarily that, that will come to fruition and be a benefit yeah and i have to say i mean we had a we had a very large grant give it get given back to us this past grant cycle and that really stings because that's you know that was several thousand dollars that we could have given to, to another artist who was ready to you know role with their with their project and and we like this one uh, on its merits but you know so i think it's better to as you said something that's fully formed and, and is actually likely to happen yeah and it was more than one okay these, these next couple are tough these uh, all <laughs> all three of these last three are all pretty tough so 101 number 101 is the reclamation project honoring the voices of people of color in folk music um date was spring summer 
The location was ideally Amherst Public Library. Uh, you know, and it basically says we would work with you to find an accessible venue. Um, but then there's there's no response to our to our outreach. And, you know, I, I do think like, again, you know, we have a fairly informal application process, but it is a process. And some folks come into things thinking that we, you know, we are going to be their promoter, we're going to be their their organizer, we're going to we're going to help them. And we just can't with 104 applications, we can't do that. Um, so I don't know. It's tough, but I think we gave them their fair chance to to come back with questions. I mean, even if you email us with questions like, hey, I can't tell it. Many times people have said, are there any good venues in Amherst? And I'll say, yeah, <laughs> you know, you, you should, you know, go to town hall or you should call the Drake. You know, there's many places around. You call the university, the colleges. Uh, but if they, if they don't make that effort, we, we really can't help them. Um, okay, 102. Who are you productions? This was Harvest and Rust, a Neil Young experience. Again, this is exactly what I said. Um, somebody who who reached out to us and said, "Hey, we, you know, I've got this great Neil Young cover band. If you guys want us to come play," and we said, "Sure, you know, put in an application and and you got to fill it out." And they filled out an incomplete application. Um, so we can't we can't fund them. I mean, in my in my book, you know, unless. Uh, And and then this last one, this is shocking. Matt York, who's been a perennial um, partner. Julian, it yeah. says, please see note below. Do you remember what his note was? Um, please see note below. Let's let me. Um, it's it's just that. Uh, we've asked for a date and a location. Um, and I think he's saying he'd, he'd like to be part of the, um, the summer concert series. He said, I understand the cultural council hosts the summer concert series and I'd love to be a part of that. Again, there was zero communication back. So, um, well, we don't host the summer concert series. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so that's that's the fundamental flaw in that in that course. Yeah, exactly. And and we have no no control or yeah. But yeah. He I mean he got a grant from us last year and and I've I've seen I mean, you know, and it's very popular around town and he wound up being one of the headliners at the um block party. You, you know, so it's but but unfortunate and look, I mean we'll we'll send it in a denial letter and we oftentimes have quite a bit of correspondence after that, and I'm happy to chat with him or email with him or Julianne can, and we can explain. No, we, we mean it when we say you need a, a venue, you you got to book your venue. Yeah. And everyone can certainly, you know, keep in mind that, uh, you know, everyone has the right to appeal this. So um, no matter w what our decision, whether it's, you know, fund or not fund, uh, our word is not the final word. They want to have another word. Well, thank you all. This was not the cheeriest. Um, you don't want to end maybe. on an up note and make everyone push through to seven and try to timestamp a few more. I've, oh, I've got like, a taskmaster like, here too to end on a positive note and and you know keep us moving because we still have the volume to go through on Thursday night. It a lot on their merits um, of the good sure. stuff. What, all right. What, yeah, what number what number do we leave off on? All right, so we we started at 41 tonight for the discussion. Um uh I mean the only other thing I guess we could do in this vein is just to to go back through that there were a few that um before 41 that we had marked as to you know, we need more information but we'd like to fund it. So um Let's let's take take care of that. Did we hear anything more for number forty from uh, Andrew Grant? This, um, this is one that um, we liked to do, right? Um, no, yeah, we didn't get any kind of confirmation. And and essentially, what they said was, we will be seeking program time 
in local venues, libraries, bookstores, etc. But then never followed up with anything in response to our email. So that's a no. Okay. That's disappointing. Yeah. Um, it is, although that's, you might remember, that's one of the ones that several folks, I think yourself included, had concerns that, you know, it, the, it's kind of a book tour, basically. Um, so. Okay. Uh, I'm just kind of going back up through the list. So number 34, we had all agreed, didn't meet criteria before. That was the yarn bombing. Um, and um, any comment there? I think we closed that one. Sorry, folks. I didn't move to anything positive. Moving back up. <laughs> this is the, 28 was, the was, negative. <laughs> was dear, dear Ella, which was a concert, but... Um, Again, they they sent no information um, for an actual date or location. Um, yeah, um, dates and locations um, we requested for uh, number twenty four, the underrepresented genres of music, residency, and showcase, uh, and we we have nothing back from them, unfortunately. Any comment there? Sorry, I'm I'm not able to see people's faces if people are leaving or this was I'm sorry, number twenty four. Number twenty four. Yeah. I um, have Chin Gibbons for twenty four. Yes, correct. But we didn't receive any right. Sorry, yes. Yep, that's right. And then we had also just number twenty five below Club O. We had said that didn't meet criteria when we met previously. I'm more trying to capture just the ones where we um asked for dates and location and they're they're not meeting that um and number two that one just didn't meet our criteria previously we didn't hear anything further from them okay so if we can time box we can do a few more here so starting with um, number 42, um, this is the Hampshire Young People's Chorus. It's their 25th anniversary concert to be held May 11th, 2024 at the Wesley Methodist Church in Hadley. They are asking um, Amherst for 750 out of their $1,900 budget. And they expect this um, to serve 200 folks. Um, their audience um, is one part of the public benefit, but also the children uh, who are performing with the chorus um, uh, receive benefit as well. So uh, the choir is made up of singers ages eight to 18, um, and they're able to experience the joy of choral singing uh, in a welcoming atmosphere. Um, and this year they'd like to hold the concert at the spacious and lovely Wesley Methodist Church Sanctuary in Hadley. Um, I believe they needed a, a larger space for their 25th anniversary. Um, they've also given several other performances, um, including one at the Hampshire Choral Society Chapel uh, at, uh, at Abbey Chapel at Mount Holyoke. And, um, there is an Advent service um, at the South Congregational Church in Amherst uh, and also outreached in March to several schools. So they do tend to work in, in and around Amherst and they do have choral members and audience members that are from Amherst and they cycle in and out as to when they perform here. So um, I'd, I'd like to support um, fully funding this, and I would open it up to anyone with comments as to whether I'd like to do that or not do that. Same. We gotta get the excitement back in the room here. Yeah, same. Yay, yay, yay. Yeah, looks awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would definitely fully fund this for my memory, they are a regular. So, I just gotta drop my needle. 
And, and yeah, since you've seen um, their performances, that that's great. And I mean, this is pr participatory culture, and you know, it's it's wonderful, and it's uh, something that is not available, you know, of this caliber in the school, and it, it helps kids know people throughout the region. I think it's great. Okay, so moving to the next, we are on um, the number forty-four, Susan Yard Harris dialogue with a collection. It's a visual arts presentation um, that you can still catch um, at, at the University of Massachusetts Museum of Contemporary Art. It opened in December or September 22nd and it's closing December 10th. Uh, they are asking $5,000 out of their $6,947.71 uh, budget. Um, the show is an exhibition of the drawings of Susan Yard Harris, along with prints from the museum collection by uh, Edda Renouf. Is there anyone who would like to um, champion this particular um, or open the, the discussion here? Me, my only clarification is that what do we do for events that have passed? You know, there's five more days of the zipped by the time they get the check in me. Mm. will be February. Well, okay. Yeah, this is worth reviewing. So our um, fiscal year 2024 grant cycle, the, uh, yes, the checks are cut in the spring, but applicants can can apply for funding for events that happen starting in the second half of 2023 so from july 1st through the end of the year to december 31st and also for the entire calendar year of 2024 so the risk there to the artist is you know they're they're they have no guarantee of getting the funds and planning the event and knowing that they're within budget but there's nothing that um, precludes anyone from uh, um, applying with us in October for events that have happened July through then, or that will happen uh, in 2023, second half. Uh, so it, 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 it is now I support some kind of funding for this. I certainly don't think we can fund five thousand dollars, but yeah, I I I agree. You know, and I I think you know as far as public benefits, you know, when I read through the application, there wasn't you know a real outpouring of, oh, and this is the public benefit that the, t the town has received. So at, at this point, the, the the most people here have received the benefit they're, they're, they that's possible. But I, I think that it is important to have art in our community like this. And um, it's wonderful to have UMass be able to host it to the public. So I think a, a pretty small partial would be appropriate since everyone agree or have any ideas around what would be appropriate there. Low partial agreed. I think it is a very big ask, um, all things considered. It could just be that, you know, everyone was exhausted by the time they did the show as far as the application was, you know. Um. Well, I think we're also looking at the amount requested versus what we have to give and how many people to give it to. So it's going to end up likely being a lower partial <laughs> that 
yeah and close to what they're requesting right i mean just realistically speaking absolutely yeah um and when with the survey um that we did right there there really was perhaps a lesser amount of support from the community for visual art which we do plenty of but um it, it definitely wasn't one of our top ranked requests from the community to do for shows. Oh, we're also at time, so. Um, so I just want to make one last note before we move on. Um, I agree with a, a partial funding on this. It's it's a, an interesting one though because she's actually looking for reimbursement for framing her paintings, yeah. and that's it's just something that you know you don't think about much, and it's worth asking the UMass folks like you know what is your I don't know. I just, I don't think we've ever seen it. I've never seen that, um, that come in. Well, you know, certainly framing as a cost for, um, no, it's, it's interesting because cost of the framing is set at $0 in the budget, but it's there. No, that's just a typo. It's, it's for framing. And that the framing is listed as almost $7,000. Yeah. Yeah, that's um, a typo. She, that's what she's saying is that she wants okay. us to reimburse for her framing, and that's, you know. Okay. Well, none of the numbers are final, and we're at time. But would getting it down to around five hundred would that be meaningful, or or not at this point? Yeah. No, I can walk with that. So yeah. Yeah, we'll have to come back. To all the numbers um do we have time for one more i think we need to wrap it i i, I, I gotta run um I'll, but I'll I, I i want to make a note to everybody though so so next week you know we have two more meetings on the books and we really we need to get to a balanced number by the 14th so i i think for thursday please do come and please really be thinking about you know the grants that you really believe in I want to champion you know we I mean we're going to continue our process um, but we're getting to that point now and in fact what we did last year and it worked pretty well is we sent out a balanced slate of grants um because now we know which ones we're gonna we're not going to fund so we can start really looking at the big picture um so so just I would just ask that if you haven't yet gone through at least quickly, just get all the way through the list and just make quick notes to yourself. Just be somewhat familiar. You know, as you can tell, none of us really scrutinize every single word as we go through. It's more of a, you know, a feel and a quick note thing. But I think if you can, if you can um, try to do that between now and then, that'll really benefit the process on Thursday. I think that'd be great, folks. Um, and we did get, it wasn't uh, the happiest <laughs> most upbeat meeting we got a lot done so that we can have some really great conversations on Thursday. I feel, I feel upbeat because believe me, this makes the decisions much more fun to make on Thursday and, and next week. Cause we're, you know, we really, we just cut out a large amount of that. What was the overall ask that came in like 180? Yeah. Yeah. I've got those numbers here. So we've been asked, uh, the total ask was $186,570. And I I have a, a running total um, that again is not set in stone, but uh, we're we're still at allocating around sixty eight thousand of which we don't have all of that. So, um, yeah, um, we have had some some rich conversations to be had, and um, looking forward to it. Cool. Thank you. Thank Bye, you, everybody. everyone. See you Thursday. Bye. Thursday. Bye. Bye. I'm gonna stop recording.